Uh, let's see. Drop the taxes. Drop socialism. Okay, let's see. You're here with your two-year-old, and you're already in debt. Why are you here today, sir? Because I hear a president say that he believed in what Lincoln stood for. Lincoln's primary thing was he believed that people had the right to liberty, and they had the right... Sir, what does this have to do with taxes? What does this have to do with your taxes? Do you realize that you're eligible for a $400... Let me finish my point. Lincoln... Lincoln believed that people had the right to share in the fruits of their own labor and that government should not take it. And we have clearly gotten to that point. Wait, uh, wait. Now, did I'm you know that, you did you know that the state of Lincoln gets $50 billion out of these stimulus? That's $50 billion for this state, sir. Ma'am, 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 I, I, I... Sir. Can you stop this, sir? Hold on. Okay, well, Kira, we'll move on over ma here. Ma I think you get the general tenor of this. Uh, it's anti-government, anti-CNN, since this is highly promoted by the right-wing conservative network, Fox. And since I can't really hear much more, and I think uh, this is not really family viewing, toss it back to you, Kira. All right, and I know Susan Rosen's having a hard time hearing me, but wow, that is the prime example uh, of what we're following across the country there. Susan uh, pointed out everything uh, <laughs> plain and clear of what she's dealing with. Now, let's turn to modern events. Tea parties. I love them. Yeah, uh, and I've been replaying that CNN conversation in my, in my, my head all day. I really have. Uh, it, I can't get enough of it because it's so revealing. What it tells you, first and foremost, keep this in mind. When they, when they cover the protest, for example, you and I will watch the protest of, uh, against the war or against economics or whatnot, and we'll take note that there seems to be a fairly large contingent of well-organized crazies. Not people who've taken a Sharpie onto a piece of cardboard and, and, and written Obama equals Hitler. We're talking about the people who put in time, energy, and paper mache to construct gigantic mocking puppets or huge signs that are graphically brilliant examples of why Zionism equals Nazism. In other words, there's a lot of skill and talent that goes into it. And when you see that contingent, you think, interesting how much of a prominent place these people have. However, what we learn from the CNN coverage is this. If the cause is just, as it was in the case, of course, of the anti-war movement, then the presence of crazies has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with the cause. But if the cause is ill, if the cause is bad, as it is, of course, obviously with the tea pro protesters, then the presence of some isolated nutcases directly affects and reflects upon the organization itself. That's why they go after the guy with the Obama equals Hitler sign and hold him up as emblematic of the entire organization, when this is actually the sort of thing that they believe that these anti-war rallies were. On 9-12, answer spontaneously generated itself as though out of the atmosphere and created this organization, which of course had existed before, in order to protest everything the United States was going to do. That's astroturfing. That's the sort of thing that they're actually accusing the right of doing when this was the sort of spontaneous developed people's movement that supposedly they think is a grand idea, but not, of course, if it challenges the wrong guy, and not if it's so stupid as to believe that you should complain when you're getting $400 at the end of the day. Does CNN escape the damage to their brand? I think oh, this I, is... I, you know, at this point, I don't know. At, at this point, I, I, I have a long... The last time I actually regarded CNN as this indispensable source of information was during the Gulf War. The first one, you know, when I was living in Washington, D.C., and the idea of a cable news network with James Earl Jones intoning its, its, its existence was, was very exciting, very thrilling, very modern. But ever since then, you know, I really haven't paid a lot of attention to them. Let's go to Joe in Santa Barbara. Joe, how are you? Hey, Dennis. Doing good. How are you? Beautiful, Joey. Hey, you know, I just want to go back for a second to that that alleged reporter on CNN. I mean, I was, I shouldn't be shocked anymore, but I'm just shocked by that naked partisanship. I mean, I majored in journalism for a while in school, and I mean, our professors insisted that anything you did be scrubbed. I mean, scrubbed of any personal opinion or hint of such. And here, this woman just just getting in a debate with the guys. I mean, she was like a oh, it wasn't black even a debate. Running a VFW member. Yeah, it wasn't even a debate. I'm sorry, I, st I spoke over you there. Say that again. It was like a. I say she, she reminded me of one of those pink wackos, and she was debating some guy outside of a VFW hall. I mean, she just like 
wouldn't even let him finish, just laid into it. Yes, and she represents CNN, ostensibly, CNN reporter Susan Rosigen. You are a creep, doll, and you're not even a reporter, and you did yourself such a disservice yesterday, and I know you're going to go home and write in your little journal how you pride yourself on being a defender of justice and all that. You had a guy with a two-year-old in his arms who's just a little sick of carrying other people's water, decides to go out one day with a bunch of like-minded people, stand there in a group, and in an organized way, no rancor, no hate, you get up in his pie hole and jump him, and you fancy yourself Carl Bernstein. You're nowhere near it, honey. You should be out of the businesses. If your bosses, who have run that joint so far on the ground now, it's getting one-sixth of what the O'Reilly factor is getting on any given night, if your bosses were still in the journalism game, you would be out the door, doll. That was a low, low moment for you. Now, I know you're going to take this sort of criticism. You're going to say, that even makes my cause more just to me. Go ahead. You play that game. Guess what? 20 years from now, Susan Rosigen, you're not even going to be in this business. You're bad at it, and you're a creep, too. Dennis Miller Show. Go ahead, Dana. What are you calling about today? Okay, back to the CNN reporter uh, really quick, who, by the way, if I can steal your style for just a second, if this broad were any more vacant, <laughs> she'd be a vacation condo in Bismarck, okay? <laughs> nice. what, no one, what no one seems to be reporting on, on any network is how with all these protests and demonstrations and everything that was going on around the country, I didn't hear of any damage to public property. I didn't hear of any arrests. I didn't see any billy clubs out. The places were probably cleaner after they left than they were when they showed up. And this is just like a lost story on this whole thing. How Can you really call It's not like lost, Dan. Oh, they're not going to give it up. If anything, this should have more clearly demarcated and delineated the split in this country. Now, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but that line is now a gouge. And the simple fact is they're not going to give it up, and the reason is they don't like the people who were out there at the tea protest. They think they're squares. They think they're deep and fervent, overly fervent for them. Belief in the Creator paints them as weirdness waiting to happen. They, uh, they don't think they're intellectual enough. And to me, they're the very stuff of this country. They're the fiber of this country. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can see them differing. We've always differed in the past. There's always been the Peter Terre set. There's always been the Tom Jode set. And there's always been the assumption on the Peter Terre set that they know what's best for the Tom Jode set. I have never seen it this flat out rancorous that somebody in the field doing ostensibly a news report for what used to be many, many centuries ago, the major news outlet in this world would get up in the face of a man just out there trying to express his exasperation with a two-year-old in his hands and treat him with that sort of vituperation that was usually reserved for something in the Scopes trial. This is the Dennis Miller Church. Part of that. John in Kansas. John, what's up? Yeah, I was just going to ask you uh, your opinion on uh, the liberal bias of the mainstream media. A couple things. Well, it's rampant. It? It's rampant. What? Let me you hear how dismissive she is? Listen, there were two two-year-olds in that scene. It's just one of them was in their mid-40s holding a microphone. For God's sakes, you are covering the story, doll. You are not part of the story. What is that creep's name? Susan Rosigen. you book her, Christian? Tell her I'd like to talk to her. The Dennis Miller Show. Mike in Chicago. Mike, what's up? Hey, Dennis, uh, I just want to tell you, I was at the uh, Chicago Tea Party. Oh, how was it? I saw the, uh, the bimbo from CNN uh, pointing her finger at the guy, like, uh, kind of like Bill Clinton, telling us he didn't have sex with that woman. Yeah, she's and, a creep. Uh, it, was a, it, was a great, it was a great time, and it was, everything was cool. The police were cool. They weren't really bugging anybody, just kind of keeping them moving along the sidewalk. And uh, nothing, got, nothing got damaged. Nobody really got outraged except the uh, people at the CNN girl. And I'm sending some uh, some photographs uh, through your producer that you can take a peek at. Oh, that's not that's thoughtful of you, Mikey. I hope you see more tea parties. Well, that's thoughtful of you. I like the way they rolled out. I heard that there was 600 of them, maybe. Did I read 600? And around 189,000 uh, people. 
And uh, I know some people are going to say that's not the turnout that they would have hoped for. That's a, kind of what I, what I thought would happen because it does not seem to be a shrieking, there's blood in the streets of town of Chicago <laughs> sort of vibe about it. But I do think one would do so at one's own peril to mistake the, the subtle rumble you hear of the pebble being pushed down the hill. I think they can disparage it. I think Barack's White House can issue in, insinuations that uh, either those who attended were uh, chain-smoking dullards, not the president, but Gibbs, who, by the way, does not seem... Uh, uh, I don't sense that he's uh, as witty as he imagines himself to be, but uh, uh, or that the president might not even be aware of the Tea Party things is one of the things I saw floated out there. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying it was uh, uh, something around the reflecting pool in Washington, D.C. that is going to draw the world's attention, but it best draw the leader of this country's attention, and you best check the people there, and it best not become a demo that is disparaged, because those were fine people, many of them with their children. I don't encourage you to put the words in your children's mouth, but just to show with them in an effort to, you know, uh, show that you are afraid of their future. Uh, I thought it was very eloquent, very effective, and ignore it your own peril. And I will say that woman was so amazingly presumptuous, I have etched her name into my head, and uh, I hope to encounter her someday, or I hope to speak to her. I hope to speak to somebody at CNN about her, but I thought it was revulsive. I thought she was emblematic of the disdain the liberal press has for those who they construe to be dullards.